Okay, when we're thinking about graphing either the secant or the cosecant graphs, I think it's very helpful to remember that we know reciprocal relationships between secant and cosine. So secant is one over cosine and cosecant is one over sine. Now this is very helpful. As you can see on these graphs, we have cosine and secant graphed on the exact same graph. So how I remember where we get our vertical asymptotes for the secant graph and exactly which points kind of are on this graph is remember these reciprocal relationships. That if I know cosine starts at one, then I, if I plug into our formula, if I know cosine equals one, secant is gonna be one over one. Okay, so it's also gonna be at one. If cosine equals negative one, like down here, if I plug in a negative one for my cosine, I get one over negative one, which is equivalent to negative one. But where we get our vertical asymptotes, that's going to come from when cosine is equal to zero. So as we know from our cosine graph, that's going to happen here at pi over two. So if we have cosine being zero, secant's going to be one divided by zero, which is not allowed. So we're going to get a vertical asymptote going on there. We also have another one occur over here at three pi over two, because cosine is again equal to zero. Therefore, secant gets a vertical asymptote. Something very similar happens here with cosecant. Um, basically the same idea, sine starts at zero and goes up and then comes back down. Um, so when it starts at zero, cosecant's gonna get a vertical asymptote. When sine returns to zero here at pi, again, cosecant gets another vertical asymptote. Let's see if we can put together a nice graph of 2.5 times secant of four tenths times X. So as I get going on this, remember that secant and cosine go hand in hand. So because cosine starts up here at one, secant will also start up at the top here. And then let me see, what do we have going on? Just kind of lay out, nice little map going on here. Cosine typically starts at one, goes down and comes back up. All right, so where cosine was at zero, we're gonna get a vertical asymptote. So that's gonna occur right here. And another one over here. All right, some other things as I erase our cosine graph that I'll go ahead and sketch in here are I know that we've got one here and we end up back at Normally it's at one for our cosine graph, but I'm just kind of putting those key points in here at one and negative one. Now that's gonna be changing on our specific one that we're trying to graph because this 2.5 out in front is gonna go as a stretch of our graph. So that's gonna go as the label on our Y axis. So we can say 2.5 here, and then we go down to negative 2.5 here. All right, just kind of sketching everything else in. We'll worry about the labels on our X axis in a second. I wasn't concerned with a vertical shift because we didn't have anything added or subtracted to the end of the entire function or a horizontal shift, sometimes called a phase shift because we didn't have a number added or subtracted directly from X. So it's gonna take on that same look as our general uh, looking secant graph, but we're gonna be very careful about our labels as far as the X axis and Y axis goes. All right, so we've already got our labels on the y-axis. That was based on this 2.5, the stretching factor out in front. The next labels we wanna be concerned about are the x-axis. This is gonna be affected by the period has changed. So the period normally for sine, cosine, secant, and cosecant is normally two pi. So to do the computation, what our new period is gonna be, it's always two pi divided by this multiple on the inside. So two pi divided by 0 0.4 or we may be able to simplify this down, write this a little bit more nicely by saying, well, that's two pi divided by four tenths, which can be calculated as two pi multiplied by the reciprocal multiplied by 10 over four. So as we multiply numerators and multiply denominators, we get 20 pi over four, or we can say that's gonna be five pi with just a little reducing down, meaning that it's gonna take five pi units to go all the way from beginning to end before it starts repeating itself. So this one starts at zero and it's gonna end at five pi, 
let's go ahead and try to label the other important values along the way. So halfway in between here, that's gonna be 2.5 pi. Halfway in between zero and 2.5, we're gonna get this vertical asymptote. So let's label that as 1.25 pi. And then halfway between 2.5 pi's and five pi's, we're gonna get 3.75 pi's. That's where this other vertical asymptote is over here. Now, if you're wondering, what's the difference between the graph we just got and the graph of negative 2.5 secant of 0.4 x? It's almost the exact same. The only difference is this negative out in front. What that's gonna to do to our graph is gonna be a vertical reflection. So basically, all of this portion of the graph that was above the x-axis, that would start down here at negative 2.5 and go down to start out with. This portion that was below the x-axis, this kind of loop going on here, gets shifted up above the x-axis and you would get a, a loop kind of going up here in the middle. And then this last piece, again, that shifts down below the x-axis and it would be facing downward. All right, so I hope this helps out in getting our labels on the x-axis and y-axis and graphing the secant graph. Good luck.